You're likely well aware of this, but the cost of housing in this country, and in many other countries, has gotten pretty damn outrageous in recent years. In previous generations, someone could earn enough work in a steady blue-collar job to afford a home for their family after just a few short years of careful saving. Whereas today, even dual-income white-collar households face a difficult and uncertain path towards homeownership. Things have changed, and no amount of avocado toast can account for it. And we'd love to get into the specific reasons why this current housing crisis exists, but that's a job for another channel. <laughs> this is Weekly Weird News, so instead we're just going to talk about the most absurd, egregious, and downright shocking example that we've ever seen of how bad the cost of housing has gotten. Take a look at this six-bedroom, four-bath house that was recently listed on Zillow. It's not much to look at, and hey, maybe it does have good bones. But the fact that it is all boarded up and overgrown and fenced off with a sign that upon closer inspection reads, Condemned, does not lend much curb appeal. Mm -mm. But hey, look, sometimes a good starter home is a fixer-upper, a place you're going to need to put a little bit of sweat equity into, and, uh, you know, the reward is then you've, you've done it yourself yeah. and you get to enjoy. Millennials, uh, they want a perfectly good uh, dream house for their first house. And sorry, bucko, you're going to have to buy a, a real shithole. Yeah. And you're going to have to put some elbow grease on it. Mm -hmm. People looking for their dream home, they probably don't want this one. But for a starter home, hey, look, it, it might have potential. Yeah. Uh, let's, though, read some of the overview section to learn a little bit more about this place. Great opportunity to own large home on a large 6,000 square foot lot. Great location to freeway and expressway. FHA has a loan option, documentation in disclosure package. Home has inactive meth lab and meth contamination. Hmm. See county docs noting garage location, remediation process, and subsequent costs associated. Home has not been cleared of contamination and will be transferred to the new buyer in its current state. No access prior to property being cleared by Santa Clara County's Health Department guidelines. Access denied by county. Okay, so this, this is not just a fixer-upper, it's a fucking meth house. No, no, hey, that's turnkey, buddy. You're ready to start making your own meth in this house. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a turnkey operation. And the, the cops can't bust you because that would be double jeopardy. That's right. This house has already been uh, convicted. Yes. So, <laughs> hands off, Hank Schrader. Yeah. You're just going to have to let me cook. This is my domicile and I won't be harassed. Uh, but yeah, someone, someone fucking made meth in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of it, apparently. It's still so heavily contaminated by the chemicals the previous owner used to cook the meth that it is, you're not even allowed to enter. Well, if there's it's any, just as is. Any leftovers, you're going to be able to rehab that home in no time. You will never stop working. Also, I mean, another thing we learned from Breaking Bad, uh, beakers and uh, graduated cylinders, not cheap. No. More expensive than you'd think. This is going to be like one of those storage wars situations where you open up the garage, you don't know what's in there, but it could be gold. Yeah, and, I mean, we don't know how much the authorities... Uh, you know, looked around this place, but I'm gonna go Give around. Some money. Go around tapping on those walls. Yeah. Listen for any uh, any areas that seem a little less hollow than the rest of the place, because you know this house built in the fucking 50s or whatever. There's nothing in those walls. It's cardboard. You might be able to put a price on a house, but you can't put a price on an adventure. Yeah. This this house is all about the story. Of yeah. The house. This it has a story. It's got character, and once once you get a little taste. The construction will never end. That's pretty much how the Winchester house yeah, was created. Some people buy furniture as a conversation starter. This, now you can own an entire house as a conversation starter. Yeah. Actually, the Winchester house is making a little bit more sense now. Because she was seeing ghosts and all kinds of shit. Yeah, maybe she just had a, a meth lab in the basement. <laughs> yeah, just a crippling meth addiction. Yeah. Yeah. They're called skinny pills, and they're doctor prescribed. <laughs> okay, so yes, this, it's a lot of red flags here at this house. But at least that means the price is probably heavily marked down due to the whole meth lab thing. Although living in California and seeing the big red flag of Santa Clara County, uh, probably not going to be cheap. So let's check out what the, what the fuck is that? $1.55 million. Hmm. Well, 6,000 square feet in this economy. I guess so. You can build a lot of meth here. Yeah. The boarded up meth house is going for more than one and a half million dollars. In fact, the, the seller recently raised the price 125000 from what it was previously listed at. A standard 20% down payment. Not even standard anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but well, if you... Typically, if you don't want the insurance... If you don't want to take along, mortgage insurance. Yeah. yeah the, standard, pre the previously standard 20%. Uh, down payment on a mortgage for this meth house would be 
three hundred and ten thousand dollars cash, baby. <laughs> And uh, you would presumably just have, you know, have that just sitting in your savings while you shop for the right house with a full uh, $60,000 of it not federally insured <laughs> because it only yeah. goes up to $250,000. Uh -huh. uh, and actually, it somehow gets even worse than all of that. Here's San Jose's Mercury News. The San Jose home, about a block north of Gunderson High School, was raided in March of this year as part of an explosives investigation targeting 36-year-old Peter Karasev, who investigators said was using it as a base to stockpile bomb-making chemicals oh, and methamphetamines. Over the course of four days, San Jose police and explosive specialists with the FBI and National Guard uncovered homemade liquid explosive, multiple energetic homemade destructive devices, and multiple suspected destructive devices unspecified bomb-making materials, and pipe bombs, the Mercury News previously reported. Karasev, who lived in the home with his wife and three children, is now in custody and faces a federal indictment for planting several bombs around San Jose, including ones that targeted Pacific gas and electric infrastructure. I mean, they do have it coming, but this was the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> his family has been relocated. Explosions occurred on December 8th outside the Macy's department store at Westfield Oak Ridge Mall and on January 5th at Snell Avenue and Santa Teresa Boulevard in the wee hours of the morning. The similarities between the two explosions indicated a single person was behind them and police used cell phone tracking and surveillance video to tie Karasev to the bombings. Wow, that did get a lot worse. Yeah. Oh, you, it doesn't stop with the meth. Yeah. Believe me. For a second there, I was like, all right. Close to a school, yeah, That it, at first glance, that seems bad. But the excuse could be, you know, school funding's taking a hit nationwide. They had to open up the chemistry lab in yeah. the neighboring houses. Yeah, the local the, the local high school chemistry teacher has fallen on hard times. It is really... This uh, is more, indictment, the art. <laughs> more of an indictment of our education system than anything else. But yeah. no, that's... Uh, no, no I, I think he took it a little too far after, uh, well, multiple levels. Yeah. But it just goes to show, uh, when you're energized, you can do anything. Yeah. This house has a hell of a story. I wasn't cooking the meth for sale. That was for my personal use. Well, if you're planting so many bombs, you're going to need a lot of meth. Yeah. And yeah. I, th I'm sure that a lot of the ingredients are interchangeable. Yeah. So. Probably, yeah. You know, you're, you start making meth, and you're like, hey, I, I well, accidentally blew up the basement. What I'll, if I wanted to do that on purpose? A lot of this could also get used in, in bomb making. Hmm. Now you're thinking. Yeah. Killing multiple birds with one stone. Uh, possibly killing more than birds. Yeah. Well, it turns out they uh, they did. Everyone's been kind of buried in the lead a little bit with the whole meth lab talk. <laughs> yeah. It's a great headline, but uh, the, does not tell the whole story. The essentially this area's Unabomber uh, uh. is a, <laughs> a little more. Uh, yeah, and you being associated with that house in particular is a uh, okay. Maybe take a step back. Maybe uh, maybe not increase the price of the house. Yeah, before it was like maybe you'll find some money uh, stashed in the walls, but now maybe you'll find a bomb stashed in the walls, and that's way less fun. Yeah, and it really seems like no one involved is going to do any work in going in there to figure out if it's even safe. No, to walk you, you into. couldn't pay me to walk into no, that. They're like house. as is, and we mean as is, and no, there are no open houses. Yeah, we will be serving cookies on the sidewalk. And you know, with with my luck. I buy the place, and it also turns out it's got asbestos and lead. Oh, jeez. Oh, God, just burn the whole place down. Terrible. But, but don't burn it down, because that'll release the chemicals. Yes, and, and well, the, uh, both a selling and a not selling point, the vicinity to the high school. Yeah. Great schools right across the street, but there's a lot of problems. Location, location, location. Well, okay, uh, yeah, it's not just a meth house, as we learned. It's also a little bit of a terrorism house, just in time for Halloween. It's got a story. Uh, here's the San Francisco gate with more on what the next owner will be dealing with. Santa Clara County prohibits people from entering contaminated properties until they're cleaned, according to Larry Little, the communications officer for the Santa Clara Department of Environmental Health. Elliot, why does your wife think it's so funny that the guy's name is Larry Little? It's a funny name. Larry Little. Larry... Uh, hello, um, you can't enter that house until all Who the is, contamination is cleared out. Who is that? Is that uh, Larry Little, the communications Excuse department? Excuse me, person? Larry Little here. Where is he? <laughs> all right, we've had enough fun. Uh -huh. Quote, moving into a meth lab comes with risks that should be handled by trained experts. Alex Statner, president of industrial hygiene firm Healthy Building Science, told SFGate, this is not a DIY operation, <laughs> nor for a home buyer without financial means to address the suspected contaminants on this property. 
Once the hazardous materials are removed, there can be lingering soil or water contamination, he added, as well as more general chemical residues that could pose a threat to future occupants. He estimated that the price tag for the cleanup would probably be in the four or five figure range rather than six figures, but that there were really too many unknowns. It really depends on the condition of the property and how the meth lab was operated and what they left behind. Was this a respectable meth lab? Did they follow the OSHA guidelines yeah. for running a meth lab properly? I would love for them to go in and go, actually, you know what? Not bad. <laughs> you know, as far as meth labs go. Credit's this, where it's due. This one's got good bones. Yeah. WW, what's that mean? I do love that, like, e even you, you can never, like, garden there. No. You will literally be poisoning yourself. No. Well, yeah. These, you, like, can't. These tomatoes are delicious. This six bedroom house. No one with kids should ever live there because no. kids roll around in the fucking dirt and yeah. the dirt is contaminated. Um, and I'm sure the neighbors absolutely love that, uh, you know, the way the earth works is uh, all their shit's kind of contaminated. The too. neighbors are praying for someone to buy this fucking house and just uh, do soil samples and clean it all up. Because, well, if you look at the price tag, all things considered. It's if you're already spending that much in this area, yeah. you just throw a couple uh, tens of thousands of dollars yeah, on the top. What's and... eighty thousand dollars more after you've paid one point five five million dollars exactly for a boarded up meth lab? You you buy the house with your egregious down payment, uh -huh. and then you take out a loan based on the house's equity that you already have. Yeah, and you put that sucker back on the market, and that's how we get into flipping houses. Flip that meth lab. Click the join button and we'll buy the meth house. No promises. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this is definitely a listing that we will be checking up on in the future. Uh, it, it did become a, a very widespread, popular uh, leisure activity during the COVID era. Of yeah. just Zillow gone wild. Even if you're not even shopping for a home, just using the tools available to, you know, every once in a while, check in on the housing market and see what's going on. It's it's quite literally the opposite of when you buy a lottery ticket and get to fantasize about all the things you would buy for about 24 hours. If you really want uh, to lose all hope and just be content with your normal day-to-day -day life, you just log into Zillow or Redfin and you're like, all right, well, that goes that dream. Yeah. And I, it is fun to like, you, you hit the heart icon so you get updates on them because there's definitely- And then they sell. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck? There's pretty much like nine times out of 10, the house that you expect, like who the fuck is going to buy this? Someone buys it. But there has been a few that are just so fucked up that like you just see like over the course of like two or three years, they just like, the price changes every month and a half or so. Yeah. Do you see that one that sold that was like built into a bridge here in LA? What? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Like it's a pretty unique property. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's a real conversation starter. <laughs> yeah. You park on the bridge. You walk down the spiral staircase into my loving home that sits above a river. And the river is obviously dry because we're in Los Angeles. Right. But... Sometimes it's wet though. And you have riverfront property for that month and a half. Yeah. Don't. Go near the water or touch it or drink it, though, because mm -hmm. it is dangerous and toxic. And if you step foot in it, it will sweep you away and kill you. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of fun to look at it's when, it's, when it's moving. The rest of the time, it's sort of just a pile of rocks and dirt. And uh, just you're, you're up close, up close, just looking at the drought that is suffocating this state with no end in sight. But there that, that one or two months in the wintertime when there's water, oh, baby. Beautiful birds that inhabit our lovely wetlands. Yep. We got egrets. We got Canadian geese. We got Do ducks. we have Canada geese? Yeah. What? I don't think they've gone back yet. Oh. Uh, that's ducks. Cool. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Coyotes. Lots of coyotes. Lots of coyotes. Yeah. Well. And probably some fish. I see people fishing in it. I think it's for the love of the game, though. Yeah. Definitely not going to eat. I do see a lot of like old dudes go to like Echo Park and fish where like they say they're like, yeah, you can fish. Just well, throw it back when you're yeah, done. Yeah, because they they artificially fill the lake with yeah. fish uh, for multiple reasons. But one of them is for leisure activities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing wrong with that. Please don't eat the fish, though. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, Dillo, fascinating. And mm -hmm. it, it is hard to imagine anyone is desperate enough to own the meth lab slash bomb house. If the price was right. <laughs> but then again. The housing situation in this country is unimaginably desperate. What's especially insane, though, about this is that on Zillow's helpful little neighborhood map, we can see the estimated values of nearby houses and the prices for any recent sales in the neighborhood. And this meth lab is priced just about exactly the same as every other house in the neighborhood, yeah. which, um, you know, empirically, that leads us to conclude that every house in this neighborhood is a meth lab filled with explosives. Otherwise, that would not make any sense. 
We are uh, left to conclude that this is a meth neighborhood. Yeah. Or they're like, you better not price that thing lower and drag down the rest of our property values that are already being yeah. hit by a gigantic meth lab being in the area. Yeah. I, I, price it astronomically high so that it uh, raises the value of all of our homes. I mean, that could be it. Yeah. Good luck with that, though. They, this is the perfect opportunity for a new HGTV show where they buy uh, houses that were previously crime scenes yeah. and rehabilitate them to sell them to unsuspecting homeowners. I feel like that's got to exist. Right? I don't know if HGTV has the balls. The, like, the home improvement reality genre produces so many, like just an unfathomable amount of content every year. Yeah. What's the one that, like, there is one show that even its own, like, creators have never seen all of it because it is... Probably uh, House Hunters. Yeah, House Hunters. Yeah, uh, There's, like, a thousand episodes. At any given point, there's, like, 30 different crews filming House Hunters simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Every They do an entire season and air it in, like, a month. And every year, there's, like, 12 seasons. Fucking crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, there's got maybe there's a House Hunters meth lab edition. There is a show. Oh. Called Murder House. Murder House. Oh, flip. but that wasn't that like on uh, one of those Tubies or something. Uh, Hulu or no, uh, uh, Quibi? Is that Quibi. A Quibi original? Roku. Roku. Well, Roku bought Quibi, so that makes okay. sense. Okay. Yeah. So it stands to reason that that was a Quibi uh, original. Murder House flip. Uh huh. Imagine you are murdered, and uh, then the side of the scene of your murder becomes uh, just light entertainment. I mean, the for, Sharon Tate uh, for house, house flippers. Not, it wasn't a house flipper, but they recorded that Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson album there. Well, then they tore it down. Yeah. But he took that door and put it on his studio in New Orleans, and then... He's so edgy. And then after a while, Sharon Tate's sister had a conversation with him, and he was like, like oh, yeah, no, I'm being a t total yeah, fucking yeah, dick. This is, uh, people, are, people are real. Dead yeah. people were real ones. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, moving on now to some animal news. Oh, finally. So New York City is a kind of a place that... It's not a place that anyone associates with wildlife uh, but then you remember the turtles down there in the sewers well <laughs> allegedly but then you remember that there's something like three million rats living there though i don't know that might change if nyc's weird mayor eric adams has his way but like aside from rats and maybe pigeons humans won the war against wildlife in the big apple a long time ago mm -hmm. which may help explain one of new york city's most enduring urban legends Giant alligators living in complete darkness in NYC's sewer system. This legend gets revived every couple of years when someone abandons an illegal pet alligator that is then immediately spotted roaming the city. But the idea of specifically sewer-dwelling gators mainly originates from a 1935 New York Times report on a group of youths shoveling snow into an open manhole who saw an alligator angrily emerge, which they then promptly snared to the surface and beat to death with shovels. That's the New York way, baby. Me and my friends found that alligator, we'd have beat it to death with shells. <laughs> uh, from that report, Slowly, with its curving tail twisting weakly, the animal was dragged from the snow, ten feet through the dank cavern, and to the street where it lay, non-committal. It was not in Florida, that was clear. And therefore, when one of the boys sought to loosen the rope, the creature opened its jaws and snapped, not with the robust vigor of a healthy, well-sunned alligator, but with the fury of a sick, very badly treated one. The boys jumped back. Curiosity and sympathy turned to enmity. Let him have it, the cry went up. So the shovels that had been used to pile snow on the alligator's head were now to rain blows upon it. They don't write newspaper articles like they used to. That was poetry. <laughs> that well, guy probably made like $100,000 a year, That's too. the sad part, yeah. <laughs> that's like, wait, 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 back when you could uh, just write one yeah. byline, and you're just like, that's oh, going to pay baby. my whole salary. Oh, baby. This alligator getting beaten to death with shovel story, that's going to pay my next mortgage. Yeah. Yeah, it was different times. That's the type of story when someone shows up and says, actually, it wasn't an alligator. You kill that person because you can get away with it and keep the story going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't an alligator. That was just a, a very fucked up looking man. But we're gonna we're gonna stick with the alligator version. <laughs> this is swamp gas. Uh, it then describes the boys taking the dead gator to a nearby shop, where so many people showed up to gawk at it that cops had to be called. And it posits the theory that the gator had fallen off a steamer from the Everglades that had recently passed through. And here's a more recent Times report from 2020 that traces the origins of the legend. By the 1930s, advertisements for purchasing baby gators by mail were common in magazines, including popular mechanics. Vacationers to Florida would also bring back the reptiles as souvenirs. Once the cute pets got too big, the theory goes, they would often wind up in the sewer after being flushed down a toilet 
or dumped into a street drain. Quote, it was a time when all these alligators were being brought up to New York and either escaping on their own or being let loose by unhappy parents, said Michael Mischione, a former Manhattan borough historian. Yeah, I know the history. <laughs> the gator legend was elevated further by Teddy May, a New York City sewer official who reported spotting the animals in the 1930s. In a 1959 book, the author Robert Daly wrote that Mr. May was dubious when his crew first reported seeing a big albino gator and various gator colonies in the sewers. So he ventured down himself to prove to you guys that there ain't no alligators in my sewers, the book recounts. After seeing the gators himself, Mr. May had his men take up rifles and hunt them down, he claimed. His feat was also noted in a 1954 column by Meyer Berger, a Pulitzer-winning reporter for the Times, and in Mr. May's 1960 obituary in the Times, which credited him with having led a squad in clearing the sewers of a number of live alligators that discarded in the sewers as tiny pets and survived and grow large. He died doing what he loved, hunting and killing alligators. Uh, over time, this legend developed further with ideas like the sewer gators all being albino, and being mutated by the toxic waste in the sewer system, just like the turtles. Yeah, this, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles concept definitely traces oh, yeah, uh, back to this. For sure. Uh, the problem is, in reality, any alligator ever discovered in New York City's sewer system probably hadn't been down there too long. It's too cold, and there's too much bacteria down there for any alligator to survive long term. That sewer official may have been telling tall tales. Uh, yeah, I think he's like, hey, we need a raise. This job sucks. And also, I'm, all these now, gator attacks. Now we're dealing with alligators. Yeah. I need, uh, we need better benefits. It might have been one of those historically hot New York summers, though. Just makes all, everything just right down in the sewers for those gators to really hey, thrive. Maybe. And you know, they never stop growing, so... They don't, but also, as I learned on my, my bayou uh, yeah. tour, my airboat tour, uh, they, they grow pretty slow. Uh, they grow about a foot a year up until about age six. So a six foot alligator is six years old. And then after that, they grow like half a foot a year. So an alligator that's like eight to 10 feet tall, that is a kind of an old gator. That's why they're allowed to do whatever they want down in Florida. They've earned the respect. And in Florida specifically, you respect your elders. Yeah, you, you give the gator the right of way. Uh-huh. On the golf course or you on the road. You will not be using any turn, turn signals. Nope. Nope. Uh, when a later sewer bureau official was asked about all of this in 1982, he told the Times, I could cite you many cogent logical reasons why the sewer system is not a fit habitat for an alligator. But suffice it to say, in the 28 years I have been in the sewer game, neither I nor any of the thousands of men who have worked to build, maintain, or repair the sewer system has ever seen one. And a 10-foot, 800-pound alligator would be hard to miss. Yeah. But he's, he's willingly not looking at the facts here, that there was a craze decades prior of people bringing back these exotic animals and then not being able to take care and of them. And then pooping them out, yeah. But the point the is... The problem had been solved by then. Uh, they wouldn't have survived down there, though, unless unless they mutated in a specific way. Uh, I'm but telling yeah, you, hot New York summer. Either this this Robert or this uh, Mr. May, the original sewer guy mm -hmm. from the 30s, either, he, either he's lying or he did, in fact, kill every gator in the sewers, thus ending their bloodline. That's there. why these types of stories are fun, because it's far too long for anyone to disprove it. I do love that, uh, you know, we talk about cryptids a lot, and the, the New York City cryptid is just an animal that shouldn't be there. It's an animal that exists. Yeah. It's just, this isn't the place you would normally find it. it it's like any other <laughs> animal in New York that isn't yeah. like a pigeon or a rat. You'd yeah. be like, what the hell are you doing here? Yeah. No, what the fuck? Yeah. Wild. Yeah, it's yeah. New York's been just not hospitable for hundreds of years now. So yeah, yeah the idea of just any sort of animal that isn't a rat or a pigeon, not only surviving. And I'll but tell thriving. you one thing: the horses are not happy to be in New York City. No, that's what they, they are abused, and, they, and they'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> they just yeah. poop all over the street. They do not have a good life. Those those horses. No, they don't. Do not uh, get a horse and buggy carriage ride when you're in New York, no matter how bad your mother or grandmother wants you to have one. Yeah, it's not even that fun either. Yeah. Anyways, that brings us to why we're even talking about this right now. Uh, well, the legendary New York City sewer gator has finally gotten its own official monument in Union Square. And this is really funny because even if, if they didn't even ever exist, this is just like pointless. It's like the Animals in War, our, our favorite memorial. Yeah, in, Animals uh, in War. Was at Hyde Park. Animals in War. They had no choice. This yeah. is alligators in New York sewers. They probably didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, they came against their will. Yeah. Uh, here's the times from this week. Legend has it that the alligators started out as the tiny, cute playthings of children. 
but when they grew too big, parents flushed them down toilets, sending them deep into the bowels of the city's sewers. Abandoned to New York's underbelly, the alligators did not wither and die. Nourished by trash and rats, they grew. They found each other, bred, and formed colonies. Well, <laughs> this person is taking some artistic liberties here. No, this here. is the theory, though. Uh, for generations, they roved unseen, threatening to snap up anyone foolish enough to wade into their domain. The playthings had morphed into monsters and have haunted a city's collective imagination for a century. Now they're being honored in the heart of the city. Last week, Swedish artist Alexander Klingspor helped unveil NYC Legend, a bronze sculpture and ode to the enduring myth of the sewer alligators. The 1,320-pound work depicts an alligator curled around a manhole cover guarding the detritus of the city. A quarter, a straw, a soda can, and a paper bag from McDonald's. <laughs> hey, our city's a real shithole. You know, after reading that story, I'm convinced now that uh, mobsters put the alligators down there to cover up how they were dumping bodies. Like, oh, the alligator must have gotten uh, four or five of my guys. I wouldn't put it past them. That is a, that is a, you're thinking like a mobster now. That's right. That's what you got to do to survive in these mean streets. That's right. Mm -hmm. Down on Mulberry Street, where I thrive. And as for what inspired the artist, Klingspor, who lived in New York for more than a decade until moving to London in 2019, said he sought to honor New Yorkers with his work, seeing a parallel between the city's residents and alligators, okay. which have evolved and adapted over millions of years and have to survive extremes, just like New Yorkers. You have to learn to survive, and you have to learn to be resilient and you have to learn to heal yourself whenever the city beats you down, he told the Washington Post. Klingspor, 46, said the idea came to him while visiting an anthropological museum in Mexico City. As he looked at the sculptures and artifacts of ancient Mayan and Incan civilizations, he realized human beings for millennia have revered and feared animals as deities. He wondered whether modern-day New Yorkers had done anything like that, even if it was less formal. And he's kind of right, although if he really wanted to like actually honor that... Uh, concept it would have been a giant rat eating a slice of pizza yeah yeah well there was another one recently the rat that stole the donut or the bagel and brought it to its rat girlfriend and they ate it together oh that's cute everyone loved it did they eat opposite ends of the bagel yeah, and they, they, kissed, kissed? Then they kissed yeah and yeah. there's also a huge scandal going on right now on the internet uh, oh, because people are getting their bagels with the meat the bread the, dug the out la uh la people going to new york and asking them to scoop the bread out of the bagels i mean i've never heard of that this is the first i'm hearing of this and I kind of get it. Uh, there's a lot of like, you see this a lot at like sandwich, uh, like sub places where mm. a lot of times like physically creating the sub, you have to make some like, sacrifices where if you actually put two slices of bread over that much fucking meat and cheese, like it would fall apart. So they, they carve out a little, a little uh, extra space in the bread. Just make it a smaller sandwich or eat two sandwiches. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. But... <laughs> Uh, this is what they do, and uh, yeah, I guess this has expanded to bagels, and so... You're already having an unhealthy snack. Just fucking deal with it. I mean, it's it's sort of like with uh, muffins. Like, there was, you can now get muffin tops at a lot of bakeries, because that's the part everyone likes. And yeah. the, the outside of the bagel, where all the, the toppings and the crispiness are, that's what people like when they eat a bagel. And if you're eating a bagel sandwich, you just you scoop out all the actual bread because, you know, I'm watching my Eat carbs. half the bagel. <laughs> Eat half of it. Share it with a friend. Yeah, I don't know. Why I... are you going into people's bagel shops? These places who are probably serving like hundreds of people in the yeah. morning. And you're like, oh, actually, can you scoop out literally what I'm paying for? I have no opinion on this at all. I just, I, and also like the guy who everyone was yelling There's at. There's nothing like, like a good bagel. The guy who everyone was yelling at who uh, originally posted the video, like, he seemed like he was just amused by the whole thing. He didn't yeah. seem to be... So pe people like were being kind of extra mean to him. But the the story he told was very funny. He's just like, yeah, I asked him to do that. And they were like, get the fuck out of my bagel shop. Good, yeah, you should be able to tell them tell them that. But yeah, he's like, okay, fine enough. Yeah. I don't know, I thought it was a good story. I don't know why. Everyone just gets so mad at everyone now. Yeah, because there's so little that, specifically in America that uh, separate regions have left that's uniquely their own. But you really, you, you, you don't. You lost this battle a long fucking time True, ago in New yeah. York City. Everyone has fucking bagels. Everyone has pizza. Yeah, I, I will admit yours is probably better in right. both categories than most other places, but not exclusively. There's probably shitty bagels and shitty pizza in New York City. And there's probably places all over the country that are equally as good, if not better, than the average place in New York. I'll say it, that Rainbow Bagel was probably one of the worst ones I've had in New York City. <laughs> yeah, see, case in point. 
And that was lauded as as the best bagel sandwich that anyone had ever had. Yeah, we're losing our regional uh, identities, and it, it you know there's good and bad with that, but you just gotta accept it. Yeah, we all eat bagels. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can get fucking pizza on a bagel, and you can eat it any time. <laughs> well, when when pizza's in the oven, it's pizza. At, you can at have any it in time. the morning. The evening, supper time. When pizza's on a bagel, you can have pizza anytime. Anytime. That's what it is. Yeah. Anytime. Sorry, I had to re-unlock my nostalgia part of my brain. It was scrambled for a second. And I'm not talking normal size bagels. I'm talking oh, very small. <laughs> bite size bagel bites. You put them in your mouth, they burn the skin right off the top. You gotta let them sit. <laughs> You have to let them sit just long enough to where they're unappetizing anymore and too hard before you can physically take the heat. It's not gourmet, but it's what you need when you need it. Dirt cheap, ready in a minute. Perfect. That's right. Mwah. <laughs> All right, hey. this episode's going to be like an hour long. Uh, let, speaking of how New Yorkers are simply built different, Fox News host and native New Yorker Sean Hannity did what Fox News hosts do this week downplaying a mass shooting and insisting that there is simply no way to prevent this in the one nation where this regularly happens. Thank you, The Onion. But since having to do that multiple times a year, every single year, gets a bit old, Hannity decided to uh, <laughs> turn these bad boys into some deadly weapons. <laughs> decided to try out some new material and insist that if everyone simply did what he does and trained in MMA, none of this would be a problem. There's your, there's your solution. Thank I've you, got, Sean Hannity. I've got the perfect substitution for Mark Zuckerberg in the fight against Elon Musk. Yeah. A gun? No. Sean Hannity. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> They've both been training. Uh-huh. It is funny how this has become like the... It's definitely like this era's rich guy hobby. Yeah. It's like hiring someone who's like actually really good at MMA, paying them a lot of money, and just having them like fall over and pretend yeah. that you're and, good and at also it. like once a week yeah yeah i mean i'm not saying like mark zuckerberg is bad at mma uh, no he is he's fine he's uh, actually uh, dedicated uh, to it in a very uh, insane i'm sure sense. i'm sure even sean hannity like i'm sure he's picked up some moves but it, it is an interesting sort of like class signifier uh rich guys are all doing mma these days yeah it's uh it used to be like yoga like 20 years ago mm -hmm. um and that had its own problems where people would think they were fucking enlightened after paying uh, top dollar for yoga classes and shit. And we've shifted into the opposite where everyone thinks they're fucking John Wick. Yeah, because they all are like worried about how people view their masculinity. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's why. And it's stupid to pay all that money for MMA coaching when all you got to do is wake up early in the morning, go outside, drop them drawers, and aim that butthole straight at the sun. Because... All your problems are lying in the fact that your sphincter not getting enough sun. is sitting in the shadows all day long. Yep. Introduce gotta, them to the world. You gotta charge your battery. Yes. Through the, the one porthole that you have. Mm -hmm. The That's anus. Right. Anyway, <laughs> yes, 61-year-old Sean Hannity is essentially taking a page from Mark Wahlberg's 9-11 wouldn't have happened if I'd been on that plane yeah. handbook and applying it to all mass shootings. And the reason is probably because the typical uh, good guy with a gun narrative where the solution to gun violence is more guns uh, doesn't really work for the state of Maine, where the latest tragedy occurred because Maine already has extremely lax gun laws and half the adults in the state own guns. And yet, somehow, 18 people are still dead and the killer hasn't even been caught. Yeah, by the time we filmed this, I thought that it was going to, that information would be old by the time we put up the last episode. Still on the loose. Uh, he's probably dead. He probably, uh, he, I don't know. I'm assuming he, uh, Maine is like, it's, there's so much wilderness up there. Yeah. He probably just went into the woods and didn't come out. Yeah. Uh, well, we can only hope. Yeah. So anyway, here's Hannity's solution to the gun problem <sighs> via Rolling Stone writer Miles Klee. Once he'd complained that shootings are routinely politicized, ugh, something Fox surely has nothing to do with, Hannity turned the threat of being gunned down in a public space into an issue of personal responsibility. I always ask the question, when something like this happens, what is your plan? What do you do? He said, I have a personal security plan. I train in mixed martial arts. Good luck finding a martial arts instructor who thinks it's a good defense against a semi-automatic rifle. Even the MMA blogs are making fun of Hannity for this. But his absurd comment reaffirms the core delusion of gun rights advocates who resist any common sense reform to firearm laws. 
that if only these horrific attacks unfolded in just the right circumstances with a perfectly prepared hero in the vicinity, they wouldn't add up to the deadly pattern we recognize as an ongoing national crisis. Again and again, this hopeful, unrealized hypothetical is presented as a buffer against the tragic and maddening reality. And it continues. And while those who fantasize themselves in action as Neo from The Matrix are more likely to end up looking like Mac from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, invoking the razor-thin possibility of averting an act of deadly domestic terror with jujitsu is a rhetorical end in itself. Rather than contend with what's actually happening in this country, you can say, what if it wasn't happening? That Hannity would imply that universal proficiency in hand-to-hand -hand combat might make the difference goes to show that right-wingers can adjust this dodge for any context, as disinformation researcher at Dapper Gander points out. Normally, they say, if only people carried guns, this wouldn't happen. Since the Lewiston area has no shortage of citizens who legally carry, we're moved to, if only people knew Kung Fu, this wouldn't happen. Yeah, and obviously, people have pointed out over the past day and a half that... Uh the song Try That in a Small Town, um, uh, a lot of the worst mass shootings in the past couple of years have happened in small towns. Yeah. And that song is quite literally, as everyone said when it was released, just a blaring dog whistle. Yeah. Yeah, they... Uh... They mean ha black people come try that in a small town. That's what the country singer means. Yeah. No, that... Yeah, we all said it at the time, and it remains the yeah. case. <sighs> Anyways, before we move into the headlines half of this show... Uh, we have to thank today's sponsor. Thank you, Factor. With the busy fall season already in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, you'll eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Too busy this fall to cook, but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to crushing your goals. Adjust your stride this autumn without missing a step. Choose from 35 plus weekly flavor-packed, fresh, never frozen meals that promote a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, all ready to eat in two minutes. Relish! The best of autumn with fall flavors. Factors limited time only, hearty, comforting meals featuring seasonal veggies like cranberry pecan chicken and apple Dijon pork chops ready in just two minutes. They'll satisfy your fall cravings during the busy season without the hassle. Level up with gourmet plus options prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. Too busy running around during the day to think about lunch? Keep your energy up with Lunch To Go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Looking for calorie conscious options during the busy season? Try delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. This October, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash weeklyweird50 and use code weeklyweird50 to get 50% off. That's code weeklyweird50 at factormeals.com slash weeklyweird50 to get 50% off. All right, time to get into the weirdest, wildest headlines from around the world this week, starting with kids are attending pro-Palestinian protests on roadblocks. This is actually very inspiring. There's been very few rays of, of hope recently. Oh, but wait, this wait, wait. Is actually... we, we forgot to present the we're not oh, uh, sorry. endorsing uh, Hamas. Uh, before card. I speak any further words, uh, I do not, I, I condemn the actions of Hamas. Go that's, fuck yourself. I right. do, but still, go fuck yourself. It does suck that you have to say that um, every single time. Yeah, um, I'm, it's starting to turn, but I'm still seeing, I'm still seeing it. And, it. and it's actually, it's so fucking annoying because even if you do, very vocally, like, I see this, especially under certain members of Congress, the, the few good people in our government mm -hmm. at this point, uh, who have very vocally condemned this, they still, to this day, get people saying, well, when are you going to do this? And it's like, they already fucking did. Yeah. You're just doing this to stonewall any progress on that side. But yeah, no, it's cool that people were like, yeah, my, my little brother is like 12. He's too young to go to the, the protests, so he went to the, went to the Roblox protest instead. Metaverse saved. And it's like, it doesn't have the same effect as a real protest because it's just a bunch of people. The uh, media coverage of it, though. Yeah. Is, yeah. But it also has the effect of, like, uh, something very important. It's just, like, not feeling so fucking alone in uh, 
not supporting a fucking genocide, mm -hmm. feeling like you're going insane. It's good to even even in a uh, even in a blocky Roblox environment, uh, being able to look around and be like, okay, I'm uh, not completely insane. There are other people who share my opinion on this issue. Luke O'Neill had great posts this week, as usual. Uh, Welcome to Hell World. He, one of them was basically, okay, well, how many lives then? Yeah. Uh, how many lives until you've been satiated? Right. And the that's other... what it comes down to. It's like, what 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 ex exactly? How many lives? Uh, yeah. Is is it and that you need uh, to take the in other? To what obviously, happened. be misquoting it, but the other was along the lines of much like with how everything panned out with uh, Iraq, uh, you, everyone in the future will look back on this and be like, oh no, I never would yeah. have supported anything like that. But it's already at that point too late. And, and the funny thing while, is, while entire fucking city blocks were being uh, right. turned to dust. Everyone, a lot of people in this country are going, yeah, go team, go. Yeah, and we didn't have Twitter and Facebook and Instagram back then. Uh, it was a lot easier for you to uh, lie and say yeah. that, of course, you didn't support this. Uh, this shit's forever. And honestly, like a lot of, I hope this fucking haunts the conscience of a lot of people who've been really showing off how rotten their souls are. Yeah, a lot of bloodlust, a lot of. In, in uh, again, condemn the actions of the terror group. Of Moth. course, but uh, yeah, really turn people into bloodthirsty people. Like, it, it just oh. retribution at all costs, especially when there's lots of innocent civilians around. But I mean, I, I, it's cliche, but uh, yeah, the kids are the kids are all right. Not just the the Roblox kids, but yeah, just the you any any opinion polling on this I've seen people like. 30 and under. Wildly different uh, interpretation of what's happening. The, the thing that sucks is uh, that demographic has the least amount of actual financial and political power in this country and just the world in general, so it's really not going to do much, but it is at least comforting. Yeah. The kids are coming for you. Swifty swarmed a restaurant to catch a glimpse of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, but it turned out to be scarecrows dressed like them. It did the opposite effect of what a scarecrow should do, which is scare things away. It, yeah, these Swifties... Uh, it attracted them. Yeah, like moths to the flame. Yeah, this was some little town somewhere, I guess near... Uh, where, I don't even know what team he plays for, but near that. Come on! I Kansas City Chiefs! I literally... Oh, my, my Kansas City Chiefs! Yeah. I, America's Kansas City Chiefs? I don't fucking care. Anyway, uh, yeah... Literally, it sounds like it was like a game of telephone between like local moms. Oh, baby. Because, uh, yeah, they put up like scarecrows. I guess they have like a scarecrow contest for Halloween. Yeah. They had scarecrows of them up in front of their restaurant. Not the kind of scarecrows you would ever mistake for human beings. And some mom must have overheard someone else being like, oh, did you see Taylor Swift and uh, Travis Kelsey in front of that restaurant? And the, the mom's like, oh, my God, I need to call all my friends. Yeah. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are at this restaurant. And then it spread and there's like a hundred people gathered around this restaurant. And the restaurant is like, I don't know why you're here. We got flapjacks cooking though. Come right like, in. Like, they're not here, I swear. And they're like, you're lying. Stop covering for them. We need them now. Look, the Taylor mania is wild in this country. The, she just re-released, I guess, 1989. She's a billionaire. She's now a billionaire. She's got a wildly successful movie. A, 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 a monstrous tour. Yeah. I am officially too old. And she's like my age. Uh, she's not as old younger. as me. But she was yeah, born yeah. in 1989. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, it's hard. She's harmless. not like a young, young pop star. She's got like a handful of songs where I'm like, yeah, it comes on at like a party or a bar or something. I'm like, yeah, it's, I have nothing against her. It just does no. nothing for me on yeah. a deep level. Yeah. But I love watching people freak out about it. It's quite the cultural moment. And she's really putting that Travis Kelsey on the map. <laughs> He'd be a nobody yeah, if it weren't for her. He'd just be some dude if not for Taylor Swift. Yeah. Airline forgets federal chief accessibility officer's wheelchair in Toronto. We did it to prove a point. I mean, I, can you imagine? You are the airline, and they're like, oh, so a customer's complaining that we left his wheelchair at the, at the previous place. Like, whatever. Like, oh, he's also, like, the person in charge of the entire Canadian government's, uh, like, disability accessibility office. Oh, okay. That's a little more serious. Well, it just proves they don't discriminate. They lose everybody's wheelchair. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it is uh, It is cool that the, the person in the job is actually disabled themselves. Yeah. I feel like that that's important. 
that they actually have personal experience uh -huh. with this shit. Um, and uh, yeah, they they were tweeting about it, getting real mad, and it's like, no, you you, you actually uh, this is your you're doing your job right now, mm -hmm. shaming, naming, yeah. and shaming. So uh, yeah. Mitt Romney says Trump's a whack job for calling him a loser that only a mother would love. <laughs> Trump, Trump, I mean, obviously has some bangers. Trump's going to win in the insult war. But <laughs> yeah. Also, just Mitt Romney doing any kind of insult is kind of, it, it hurts in a different way. A whack job is like probably the closest he's got to like actually swearing in a long time. Yeah. No, I don't think he's ever swore. Yeah, it would be like hearing Mike Lindell swear. He's got because Mike Lindell, you know, he didn't think that deposition would leak, but uh, so he was using his uh, indoor voice, which is he can say whatever he wants. Yeah, no, I, I had a, a deeply devout Catholic uh, math teacher in high school, and uh, one day he got pushed over the edge. Can you just shut the fuck up? And I bet and you guys like, did. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was scary. Yeah. So I think Mitt Romney's got a few F-bombs in the chamber, but he's waiting for the right time. How, I wonder unload. how many Hail Marys your teacher had to do the following week. I don't know. Probably a lot. Oh, you swore? Oh, not a big deal. You're forgiven. In front of the children? I I mean, I don't think anyone even, like, reported him. It was just, like, so, just like, holy shit. God damn. That's a good class. Yeah. You understood you did wrong. You fixed the situation. This same you didn't rat the teacher out. This same teacher, I mean, honestly, a very good math teacher, but uh, the, uh, all the walls of the class where you would expect to find, um, you know, math related stuff was like pictures of fetuses <laughs> and like propaganda about like, you know, every month, like a million children are aborted in this country. Oh, so, so just like every classroom in Florida now? I guess so. Yeah. It was a lot. It was intense. Yeah, I would imagine so. This was Catholic school. Like, yeah. technically, like, that's what everyone there believed, but he was the only one who just, like, my math classroom will be just a giant, like, uh, billboard about uh, why abortion is, like, the Holocaust. Well, good to see the education system is working on all sides of our I mean, this was, beautiful... the, this was, the, this was private, private school, yeah. so it's not, you can't blame the education system. Yeah. You blame the Pope. And not this Pope. This was, like, two Popes ago, I think. I don't remember. Pope John Paul II? That would have been timed right, I think. Yeah, I think he was still Pope by then. Actually, yeah. maybe Ratzinger was in office by then. I don't know. I don't care either. <laughs> Garth Brooks is releasing his new album exclusively via Bass Pro Shops. And you, you gotta, you actually have to reel it in. Yeah. They, they, they attach put it, it in a tank. They, atta they attach it to a bass and yeah. uh, you gotta earn it. You get one of those, like, uh, boats you can take around in it. They should do a Garth concert inside the pyramid and put LED screens all on the inside of the, the Bass Pro Shops pyramid. We got, our, we got our own sphere. That place does look awesome. I looked yeah. at pictures of the inside of the pyramid and I'm like... Looks great. Yeah, I'm sure I could find something in there to interest me. It's got, it's all, got all kinds of outdoors. All kinds, every, anything outdoors, they got yeah. it. It's not just fish. It's not no. just fish, guys. More than just fish. But yeah, this new Garth album, you got to get it from Bass Pro Shops. And it's a hell of a deal, actually. It's like... It's like thirty dollars, but it comes with not just his new album, but like his last seven albums in a box set. Well, his last seven albums can't be that great. Well, then it's not for you. It's for the real Garth. Do you heads. get any uh, 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 Chris Gaines or whatever? No, that's too old. Yeah, he's due for another Chris Gaines though. That bring, would be. He's releasing Chris that one in Gaines. Hot Topic. Yeah, yeah, exclusively in we Hot want Topic. want Chris Gaines. Bring him back. Mm -hmm. Washington State Senator arrested in Hong Kong for carrying a gun through airport. You could see why I'd be confused. I, I just came from America. Yeah, this is the craziest thing here is, uh, you know, we all know TSA is fucking worthless. Yeah. This was in his carry-on. So he went to the airport in America with his loaded handgun in his briefcase, put it through the scanner. They didn't do anything. He says that it was halfway through his very long flight to Hong Kong that he opened his briefcase and like, ooh. And then he got to Hong Kong and he went to like the help desk. He's like, hey, just letting you know I have a gun. And oh, wouldn't you know, the dang Chinese government is like, actually owning a gun without uh, permission from our government is a very, very serious crime. And you're facing 14 years in jail, sir. And he's, he's so mad about that. He's like, come on, what the heck? Yeah, he should have flushed it down the plane's toilet, but then the gun would just grow up Inside that plane's yeah. sewer system. It would be an eight-foot-long gun. Shooting everything. 
Yeah, uh-huh. albino Dangerous. gun. It, it is always like anytime I go to the South, you only ever see that there. But the TSA down there, there's like ev- so many signs like, "Hey, just just in case you forgot, we all make mistakes. Yeah, listen, it's okay. Just let us know. Make yeah. sure your gun isn't in your carry on." In most states, the amnesty box has a hole like that big to put your drugs in. Yeah. The amnesty box in the South is uh, just the right size for a forty-five. Yeah, I always I always see those. I'm like, what kind of fucking idiot has a, a fucking handgun in his carry-on that, that he doesn't have permission to have there. And uh, apparently that man is a state senator. You ever the see the, the clear boxes where they're like, this is what we've confiscated yeah. here? And it's like knives with brass knuckles on it and yeah. like a grenade. Yeah, the TSA uh, Instagram account has a lot of uh, interesting stuff. It's not always just guns. But yeah, I guess this is a big enough problem in this stupid country that it is now potentially uh, a state legislator is uh, going to be spending a decade in prison in China for it. Yeah. And well, I hope he does. That'll teach you. That'll teach him. He'll learn a lesson. Uh-huh. A very tough lesson. Don't bring a fucking gun to China, you moron. Try that in one of the world's biggest superpowers. <laughs> yeah. It's getting too expensive to have fun, survey finds. They say money can't buy happiness, but they were wrong. I mean, they literally are. That is propaganda you learn at a young age. Well, also, that saying is from decades ago when that might have been closer to the truth. Yeah, it's, it's probably from the Great Depression when yeah. everyone was like coping with not having any money. Yeah. And like money. Like how when COVID was happening, we're like, outside's not so great. <laughs> money can't buy you happiness, but it can definitely help uh, help get rid of a lot of unhappiness. Yeah, a lot of stress. Um, yeah, there was an actually, there was a, a more modern survey done about this. And it's like money can't buy happiness after a certain level. Yeah. And that certain level is literally a six figure salary. Yeah. No, that, and that's absolutely true. Yeah. That, that if you're totally makes sense. Because you're mo- not, at that point, you're, unless you're a fucking idiot with money, you're not worrying about, like, you're not constantly, like, keep being kept up yeah, at night the about quote, shit. The quote is updated to, as long, and this is a damning indictment of a lot of countries, but specifically ours, as long as your basic needs are met, yeah. then uh, from that point on, you're relying on your happiness on friends, family, yeah. interactions, and uh, stuff like that. Right. But yeah, basically, uh, yeah, people are apparently they're uh, spending less money on entertainment. Yeah, because they it's outrageous. Yeah. Imagine taking a family to Disneyland. It's I mean, expensive. we take it for granted because it's here and it's like, you know, no kids. But yeah, it's it's outrageous bringing just, like even just going to the movie theater. It's well, yeah, that's why you get so that, much more than it that used AMC, to. and you could just see two per month, and it uh-huh. pays for itself. That's what Martin Scorsese says. Oh, did he? No, that's Americana at brand memes making a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> the second biggest beer producer in China said it's probing a viral video that appears to show a man peeing into a container of ingredients. <laughs> wow. This is a Tsingtao beer. Uh-huh. You, pretty good. I've heard of but it. But it's, uh, yeah, it's literally the old joke that all that, like, Mer- piss. American style, like, light lager beer is just piss. Yeah. I, apparently it is. Well, they, they probably caught this guy, but he's been doing this for like 50 years. He's like, no, it's the secret ingredient. Yeah. Yes. Uh, th- this is they they got a hold of that release energy drink from Amazon. <laughs> They're like, damn, this is good. Wow. Got a bite to it. What's the ingredient? Oh, piss. Oh, we, we have that. I'm full of piss. But it's like worker piss. Can't just be anyone's My piss. balls are filled to the brim. Yeah. Let's get started. Let's get some worker piss in here. Yeah. Let's do a little uh, blind taste test. It's delicious. Mm. Um, yeah. So, oh, uh, speaking of beer news, the Amaranth or whatever is doing a beer with her. No, I'm not going to talk it's, about it. Yeah, it's gross. <laughs> Gen- is, that, is it grosser than someone pissing into your beer bottle? Yeah. Okay. Gen Z teens want less sex on screen, according to new UCLA study. And every time this comes up, I, I'm sure there's more to this, but my explanation is always um, more people are living at home after they turn 18. And therefore, they're watching movies with their parents, and it's awkward. It awkward. It's awkward. So they, they want less of it. I mean, they, they do have kind of a point, but it's like, also, Gen Z has no fucking clue that they're growing up in, like, the most desexified era of, like, filmmaking yeah. ever. Yeah. Every movie that came out in... Kids' movies the, in the 90s were over-sexualized. Yeah, but, like, especially, like, even today, like, an R-rated movie... Maybe a couple nips it's here. It's more there. just gore, yeah. Uh, every fucking R-rated movie from like the 80s through the 90s had just the most pointless, superfluous sex and nudity scenes you can imagine. Yeah. Like there was like a quota that they were filling. Yeah. That doesn't happen anymore. And then like it was straight up marketing in the early 2000s. Like here's the unrated cut. 
Yeah, it was like a whole thing where there was like websites so like, okay, yeah, there's uh, the tits in this movie, pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I don't know what they're watching. I mean, sounds like they're watching Euphoria, a show yeah. I, I refuse to watch because I feel like I'll get put on a list. <laughs> um, but from what I can tell, yeah, that one's got a lot of a lot of excessive. Uh, Based on sex like and between movies and TV shows, it has flipped, and the TV shows are all the ones that have all the nudity in it. That is and movies, true. very rarely, honestly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, they, they Family Guy got it right. It's well, violence in movies and sex on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it does say sex on screen, so I'm sure it covers okay. the broad, yeah, a little bit of everything. So uh, some of the people, though, they're like, uh, it would be nice to see just like more platonic like, friends. Yeah, like a well-written like friendships on screen. And it's like, yeah, that's actually, you've got a point, child. Yeah. Fine. The kids are all right. Fair enough. Yeah. And final headline: Bobby, known as the world's oldest dog ever, dies at age 31. Rest in peace, Bobby. 31. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. And he looked, like, pretty healthy up until the end. Like, with a lot of dogs where it's like, this dog is 25 years old. You look at it and you're like, you need to put that dog down. No one, you're just doing this for the world record at this point. That dog is in constant pain. It doesn't yeah. know what's happening. But this, this, is, this dog's alive because you need it to be, not because it is having a great time. Yeah, but Bobby, he looked healthy. Uh, yeah. He was moving around. Uh, and uh, apparently it's because the owner would, they think it was because all of Bobby's meals were like hand cooked, uh, yeah. meals, uh, with a lot of nutrients. But, um, yeah, the I'm owner... sure lots of plenty of walks to stop that arthritis from, uh, yeah. locking up that dog's bones. It could, I mean, a lot of it's just genetics. Yeah. Like, uh, they, I, I think I saw recently that. Uh, scientists like isolated a gene in golden retrievers, which are notoriously they all get fucking cancer. Uh, they isolated the cancer gene in golden retrievers, and it like has the potential to like completely change the world of dogs and make them live like ten years longer. Golden retrievers are truly man's best friend. Thank you, golden thank you, golden retrievers. But they do die a lot. They certainly do. But when they're alive, very nice dogs. The most human-like dog, almost. They are very smart. Very smart. Anyways, uh, rest in peace to Bobby, Bobby. Portuguese, so I don't know. Well, may he rest in peace and be pour honest. Out a, pour out a glass of Madeira for uh -huh. Bobby. That's it for the show. Uh, in case you missed it, George Santos has a sister. Yeah. And that sister has a child. And that child was abducted by Chinese communists. Yeah, and our, our, the, the senator from Washington went there to get the child back and... To no avail. Xi Jinping said no. stop to it. Nope. Uh, we have that and a whole bunch more on a recent episode of News Dump. We also have Tech News Day over there. Please check both of those out. Like the video. Make sure you like the video right now. Press the bell to get notifications about uploads. Please. Look, you're already here. Hit the buttons. Like, bell, subscribe, join, whatever you want. Thank. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.